In a basement at the Museum of the North, Scott Shire leads me into a massive white storeroom. It's filled with dozens of shelves stacked eight feet tall with artifacts and animal bones from around Alaska. For example, we have an ulu here, stone chip projectile points, all kinds of caribou bone. Shire is an archeologist at the museum, and these particular items all come from the Trans-Alaska Pipeline Collection. Archaeologists excavated the artifacts as the pipeline construction wound its way from the North Slope down to Valdez, starting in 1974. I mean, think about the construction of the pipeline, that was a huge undertaking, but archaeologists were living out in those camps right alongside the, the oil pipeline workers because the archaeology crews were moving along right in front of the construction crews and just trying to get done what they could at the time. Shire says the artifacts from beneath and around the pipeline are an 800-mile-long, 12,000-year-old sampling of Alaska history. Close to 70, 80,000 individual artifacts that represent the entire human occupation of Alaska. The problem? While crews at the time worked hard to salvage and preserve these items, the associated data, like where each item was found, hasn't yet been cataloged in a modern, usable format. You know, it was like the Wild West to those guys, you know, in terms of how work was done then versus how it's done now. That's Bill Hedman. He works for the BLM's Central Yukon Field Office. He's responsible for permitting modern day projects along part of the pipeline corridor. Whether it's a, a fiber optic right away, a plaster mine, a cell tower, you know, you name it, we have to consider the effects of that project on cultural resources. And the first thing we're gonna do is look at, has this area already been inventoried? Hedman recognizes the value of the work that was done by archeologists in the 1970s, and he wants to make sure that that work remains relevant today. The ultimate goal is just to get all that data in one place. And it doesn't just go out on a shelf and collect dust. That data will function daily in this office. Hedman says the BLM has funding to start organizing the data in the coming year. It's all part of a dance between developers, preservationists, and archaeologists that takes place any time a construction project is proposed, whether that's a cell tower or a new natural gas pipeline. Hedman says all archaeological sites are irreplaceable. And once that site is destroyed, you're never going to get it back. But if I do my job well, we're gonna get something out of those impacts. Those impacts are gonna be minimized um, and we'll see that the resource was accounted for. If the final inventory is successful, the TAPS collection will have a life that reaches far outside the museum's basement vault for decades to come. From Alaska's Energy Desk, I'm Eric Ketto in Fairbanks.